All right. Good crew already. Yeah, got a few on already. Still got a few minutes till we get started. So welcome everybody as you all are joining. We're just going to, we're giving you all early birds a good seat, making sure everybody gets in. Got a good crew on already. We still got about three, four minutes. So uh, just going to say hi real quick and welcome you guys. Thanks for being early. It's a good, it's a good sign <laughs> that you guys mm-hmm. are early. Got more people joining. So as people are joining, uh, we'll be letting you in. And then uh, we got about uh, two, three minutes. And then we're going to jump right into the training at exactly 2 p.m. Eastern. So welcome, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good, 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 good. All right. So yeah. uh, while we're waiting, just make sure that your uh, sound is good. Uh, we might be asking some people to jump on a, on a mic in case you have a, a question that we can help out with. And also make sure you have that chat box open because we will be engaging with you guys in the chat. So yes, uh, make so sure that's you, good to go. That's great. I'm glad you brought that up, Travis. So if you're on, if you're, if you're, depending on where you're watching, if you're on Zoom, uh, there's a little chat icon at the bottom of your screen. You should see. How does it look on yours, Travis? On mine, I'm sharing the screen, so it looks a little different. Yeah, it's on the bottom. There's a little chat oh, icon, a little message icon you can click, and it should pop open like a side window or a separate window yep. for the chat. So. Definitely. And if you're on another platform, there's probably some sort of chat around there too we are broadcasting a couple different places so um good so we'll give it about a minute and a half or so till we get actually started so hang tight and we will be with you real quick All right. 2 p.m. on the dot. Everybody's here. Looks like we got some people still joining. We'll welcome everybody. We got some more people joining. Good, good, good. Awesome. All right. Well, this is uh this is an exciting day. This is a this is something that uh unlike anything we've ever done before. Uh we've done live webinars plenty, we've done live streams plenty, uh, but this is gonna be totally different. So if you've been on any of these before, uh Congratulations. You're on a new one. (laughs) It's good stuff. So we're going to be going through a blueprint for attracting students. Um, You know, there's a lot of different ways to attract students. There's a lot of different seasons for attracting students, but we're going to be showing you really a cool way to attract students throughout any season. So, you know, back to school season, holiday season, uh, any different kind of time. um, Really, this works all the, all the time. So, it's new, but it's it's proven. Uh, so we're not, uh, you know, doing anything outside of, uh, you know, exceptional differences from what we normally do. <laughs> I yep. guess you could say it's really uh, new for us to share with you guys. I it's mean, new this for is us to we've share been with you testing guys. with, you know, 450 schools. So we know it works. This right. is our first time really sharing it with you all for back to school or whatever holidays or anything like that. Um, but as you guys join, welcome, welcome. If you got in the chat, just tell us where you're from. I love to see geographically the kind of the map of, um, you know, who we have in the room. So if you can go into the chat and just kind of type in your name and where you're from, you never know, you might have someone 
um, coming from a, a different area. But if you could just chat in where you're from so we can, maybe there's a geographic thing that we uh, can point out for you or something like that. Uh, Sue's from Connecticut. Awesome. Destry, Texas. Wonderful. Perfect. Nice. Awesome, John. So we've got a great group here already. People involved. I like to yeah. start with that because I want to make sure you are involved. Yes. Um, I, taught, I taught school for a very long time. And I used to tell the students, say, hey, if you want this class to be interactive and you guys are you know, engaging with what's going on, then I'm going to need you all to ask questions and answer questions and be engaged. If you just sit there, uh, Diara from Atlanta, awesome, right around the corner. If you just sit there and listen, that's great. But that tells me that's what you want, right? You just want things to be delivered. So the more you all engage, the more you guys ask questions, the more we can be interactive with you and what's going on here today. So excited yeah. to get started with this, John. Excited. we got a great crew of, you know, people are still coming in. So we got, I can tell we already have an active crew telling us where they're from, Texas, Illinois. That is awesome to see. Very cool. Yes, yes. And just so you guys know kind of where we're coming from, our mission is really to arm you with the knowledge to make your school into a student magnet. Uh, my name's John Evans. That's Travis Clavin. We're the founders of the student magnet. I'm not going to give you like, you know, I know a lot of webinars like to go on to like a 15 minute rant about who they are. You could Google us if you're that curious about who we are. <laughs> we created the student magnet. We're going to, we're going to show you what we do by actually showing you what we do. How about that? And another thing too, while I'm thinking about it, um, if you got, you guys are more than welcome to turn your cameras on. I always like seeing faces. Sometimes it's easier for me to kind of read the room. Um, if I can see how you're reacting, if you're looking bored, maybe we can do a little dance and shake it up a little bit. Um, but you don't have to, but I love to see faces. So if you can go cameras on and you want to, that's awesome. Uh, looks like we got some people going cameras on. All right. The brave folks have gone camera on. If you're not Excellent. camera ready, that's okay. One time yeah. I think John, we were doing one of these and I thought it was going to be a podcast and you're like, no, we're on phone. I was like, I'm not camera ready, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I remember that. Yeah. It's like, all right, we'll just put a graphic up, uh, a sound yeah. graphic. <laughs> well, let's, let's, you guys don't want to hear us banter. Let's get you some no, stuff no, to get no. some students in definitely, the door here today. Definitely. Absolutely. Um, so, yeah, so, uh, quick so roadmap. Go ahead, John. You want to go over the roadmap? What yeah. We're yeah. So quick roadmap, we're going to go through some of the philosophy of promotion, uh, which is basically the why of why we set things up the way we do, why you should set things up the way you do. Then we're going to go through some actual implementation, and then we're going to give you an invitation to get some more direct help, which is optional, of course. Um, and what you're going to walk away with today is the exact ad that we use, the exact offer, the exact promotion that we use, one really great strategy to get students in the door, and the most profitable process that we've ever tested. And so there's probably, this probably isn't your first webinar. It's probably not your first free webinar. Might not even be your first live stream with us. So you might be wondering like, why are you doing this? And we're just going to be totally upfront. We want you to buy our coaching program. How about that for transparency? Now, this is not going to be a big pitch-a-thon. It's not going to be us up here talking about how great our program is. What we're actually going to do is just be super real with you. And as much, you know, we love being on these webinars anyway. Like this is a joy for us to do. This is something that doesn't like aggravate us that, oh boy, we have to do this webinar. If it was, we certainly wouldn't be doing it on a Sunday afternoon right after church. So we, <laughs> we like doing this, but uh, very much like you might like teaching classes and doing intros, you probably do free intros for your students. And when you do that, my guess is that you do the best you can do to provide a great class. And so that's what we're going to try and do for you today is just give you some great coaching, some great instruction here. And if you love our style and you love our process, we're hoping that you're going to want to pay us to teach you more. And if not, that's totally fine. But we just want to be really upfront about that. We're not going to try and hide behind some kind of veil like, oh, it's just this free information stuff. We're giving you some real coaching here, but our intention really is to show you how great it is so that you decide to do more of it. So, uh, are you guys okay with that? Can I have your permission to teach you and give you some information today? Yes. This is some head nods, some thumbs up. Awesome. Give me some, let us know in the chat if that's okay. If we have your permission to just give you a great coaching session and a good, uh, instruction here today. So, uh, good. All right. We're getting some, getting some heads up, some thumbs up, some head nods. It's good. 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 Yep. Okay. <laughs> Maybe you have felt lost in the maze of promotions. I, there's so much stuff and so many different ways you can do things. And there's a lot of gurus and you know experts supposedly and agencies. And they really just kind of paint this incomplete picture about what promotion is, what marketing is. And so we're going to just tear open the veil and uh, really kind of give you just the direct truth and the right. way that things actually work. Yeah, there's a lot of things you can do. But just because you can do something doesn't mean you have to do something, right? There's a lot of things people have shown you, you, hey, you can do this. But it's like, hey, what do I what do I have to do to grow? And then those other things that I can do, I can I can do if I want to kind of thing. So I'm excited to give you guys some clarity on that today. 
Definitely. Yeah. And just because another thing is just because you can do it doesn't mean you should do it. Right. Right. <laughs> like, should you? I mean, you can. There's a lot of things you can do uh, even on Facebook, but should right. you? Probably not 99% of the things. So we're going to really unlock some of the strategies, help you elevate those promotions, how to show you how to resonate with your audience and how to really drive enrollments, which is what the name of the game is. Right. And so just some quick stats. What we're showing you here today is not theory. We're going to be going through some philosophy of things just to help you understand it. But these, this is some statistics of how this process has already worked. So we've already attracted 300,000 leads. We've already booked 150,000 intro lessons. We have seen 65,000 paid trials through this process alone, 33,000 paying students. So sometimes those numbers are just so extraordinarily large that I'm afraid to share them because people just go like, okay, 33,000 paying students. But just to give you an idea, this is proven. It's battle tested uh, right. over hundreds of accounts around the world. So it's not just some kind of stuff we came up with sitting in our parents' basement. Like we actually have done this stuff. We've seen it. We've taught it to other school owners who have also gone out and used it as well. So battle tested uh, is just the thing I want you to keep in mind. And hopefully you're excited about this. This is, a, if you know, Looking back, if we would have had some way to learn this stuff back when we first started, I mean, I would have been just ecstatic. And the reality is we had to learn all this stuff. So if you're excited, let us know in the comments. Uh, just drop a big yes in the comments if you are excited about getting into this process and learning for us, learning with us today. Let us know you're excited. Looks like Sue is excited. Awesome. Good, good, good. All right. Awesome. The more you engage here, the more you're going to get out of it. Like Travis said, you know, yep. engagement really is uh, going to amplify how you learn, because if you're not plugged in and you're not engaging with it and you're just a bystander, <laughs> that's okay. But you're, you will right. get more out of it by engaging. You guys sure. experience that when you're teaching classes, right? When the kids are engaged, they're responding, they're, you know, energetic, they're giving you those physical and, and verbal cues. It, it, it's good, right? You're like, okay, they're getting it. So we want to make sure you guys get it too. For sure. For sure. So I know there's a lot of talk out there in the in the industry right now about crafting an irresistible offer. How many guys have heard that term before? You got to craft an irresistible offer. If you've ever studied any kind of marketing or promotion, that's what they all say, right? That's what all the, the gurus tell us. And a lot of times I think we get confused about what that means. It's not really just about discounts. It's really about creating something that's going to resonate with your potential students or possibly their parents if you're marketing to children um, or you know trying to attract children to the school. But it's really what you want to do is create something that is so irresistible to them, it pulls them into your school where it's not you trying to like convince them how great it is to come into your school. And we'll get into a lot of the details about that. But just I want you to just take a second and just imagine that you have this offer that is so magnetic that it literally draws students in like a force of nature. Like you don't have to convince. You don't have to pitch. You don't have to sell or be sleazy. Just having an offer that just attracts students. If you just imagine that for a second and, and really it's not a random act, like it's an art and a science. We're going to demystify all of that for you here today. Um, but what we really want to just help you see is like there, you can create an offer that just brings people in automatically and it goes beyond numbers. It's not about discounts. It's really more about building emotional connections. And so we're going to guide you through crafting that offer and really how to speak to the hearts and the aspirations of your audience. Yeah. And one thing I love about the offer that we're going to get into is people start to ask themselves, well, why wouldn't I, they, they say to themselves, well, why wouldn't I, and when you can have someone come into your school and ask themselves, why wouldn't I join? Why wouldn't I be a part of this program? You don't have to sell them anything. You just have to be there to answer their questions and provide them with, with what they need. So right. when they can start asking themselves, well, why wouldn't I? It's it's a no-brainer for them. And that just gets them connected to you, like John said, emotionally, relationally, which is really what we want to build, right? Culture and relation with these students, not just a transaction. So great yeah. way to start off the relationship. That's a great point. And people are going to ask that question no matter what. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing most people do is why wouldn't I? And that's why you hear things like objections, right? <laughs> if you ask somebody to do something and the first thing they think of is why wouldn't I? The the secret to having a, an irresistible offer is to have the answer to that question. There's no reason why I wouldn't because they can come up with lots of reasons if you give them some, right? If your offer is not irresistible or if you build, I've seen offers where they build in reasons why they wouldn't. Well, that's not going to work. That's not right. irresistible, right? So it's very vast. There's a lot of, there, I mean, there is a million ways to 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 create an offer. We've probably tried all of them. I, I, I would be willing to bet my own money that none of you could come up with an offer 
legitimately that you would actually run that we have not already tried. Um, we've done so many different offers, so many different vehicles, so many different audiences we've, you know, attempted. Um, so we're going to just kind of unmask all that stuff for you today, but I'm curious to know what you guys would think. And this is where this is going to get interactive. So I want you, I want you to just type into the chat or let us know what elements do you think make an offer irresistible? Like, what is it right now? I'm very curious to know what you guys think. So if you drop a comment and just tell us what you think makes an offer irresistible, and uh, we're, we're going to go through that, but I'm going to yeah. hang hang here for just a second and just wait until we get some people. Or if you've never thought in. about that, maybe yeah, you never, never thought, thought hey, I, is this offer irresistible? All right. Chris says, good value for the money. Yes. Okay, good. Let's see some uh, empowerment. Interesting. Michael says empowerment. I love it. Sue says, I'm sure. So like, I'm sure this is, I'm sure this is a irresistible offer, I'm guessing. What do you think it is? in an offer that makes it irresistible. Oh, Sue says, I'm not oh, sure. Not sure. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for being transparent. Sue. That was good. That's good. Giving That's us good. clarity there. Yeah. Talk to text. Maybe chat yep. GPT texted that one in for us. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any this other- This is an interesting question, John, because I, I, I would gather that a lot of, and this isn't a criticism, it's because no one's really taught anybody this before, is when you have an offer, what's making it so someone has to take advantage of it? Right. We, we sometimes we just think, hey, I'm going to throw something out there. Someone says, well, you can post this. You can post five times on your social media. Uh, four of them need to be value. And then the fifth one needs to be like a call to action. And we have like all these kind of things that give us these blueprints that we're supposed to be doing. But no one's ever actually showed us. All right. Well, what do I say <laughs> specifically right. it's for so someone to be like, hey, I have to do this. <laughs> right. They're like, there's there's there. You can make a lot of complexity in, in advertising, but we don't need to be, we could be very simple. So nope. let's dive into some of the psychology of it first. Um, and then we'll get into the actual nuts and bolts. I think, you know, we could just slap, we could have just in the first five seconds slapped up our ad and shown you how to run it. But if you don't understand like why the certain elements are there, why things don't work, the temptation is to kind of change things that don't need to be changed or to leave things exactly the same when they should be changed based on your offer. So we're going to give you some of the psychology so that you can actually implement this stuff, right? We don't want to just give you just like a cookie cutter thing that you just slap up on your Facebook and it works, right? Um, or it doesn't. And then you don't know why, right? Low risk. I love that one. Carl says low risk, something that would cost them much more in the long run if they don't take advantage of it. I love that. Good. Love okay. Awesome. So you guys are kind of starting to get the idea. So creating an offer that strikes an emotional chord um, is, is a huge part of it, right? And so thinking about, yes, value, you know, getting more value than you could get. There's some emotion tied to money. Of course, there's some emotion tied to tied to value. There's definitely some emotion tied to risk. So those things are definitely taking part in it. Um, but if you think through like, how can you create an offer that strikes an emotional core? That's a different, different question, right? And, and what about something that kind of resonates? What do you think the secret is to that? We'll, we'll talk through some of that stuff. Feel free to keep chatting that stuff in. But what I want to give you is kind of a, a little dichotomy between two parts of uh, maybe some clarity around what an offer even is. Some people would define an offer as like a free week, right? Well, a free week's an offer, right? And actually, what a free the words free week and that sort of offer is really what we would call a vehicle, okay? And so an offer is really what does your audience desire? And what is the emotional part of it? So if you're, if, let's use kids for an example, right? If you're, if you're marketing kids programs, you're really marketing to their parents because the kids don't have the ability to pay for their classes. So you're marketing to the parents. What is the desire and the emotional part of the parents? What do you, What is your program delivering when it comes to what the parents desire and what is the emotional side of that? So start thinking through some of that stuff. Maybe if you want to chat some of the, that in, that'd be great too. I'd love to see the comments. Um, and when you look at the vehicle, the vehicle is how you deliver it, right? And so like a good example is cell phone companies have got this figured out like amazing. I watch cell phone commercials like in awe of how well they've got this little things figured out. Their ads appeal to somebody that wants to be kind of that person, right? The person that always has the new phone, that comes with all sorts of like social status and being the envy of their friends, right or wrong, you know, that's who they're advertising to. And the, you know, maybe they want to post the best pictures on their Instagram and get all the attention. That's the offer, right? The offer of every, if you start watching cell phone co commercials, it's all about 
being that person, being able to have the best pictures on your Instagram, being the one that's cooler than everybody else, right? The vehicle is how they deliver that. And that's usually the new phone or uh, you know, a cheaper rate or better network, that kind of stuff, right? And what happens, what's funny is whenever you run into somebody in like real life, right? <laughs> You're at church and you go, oh, you got a new phone? They go, yeah, I got switched to AT&T because they were cheaper. Now we know that that's probably not the case. If cheaper were the only offer, if cheaper was the, the answer, everybody would be like on Mint Mobile with a flip phone because that's the cheapest, right? <laughs> that's the cheapest phones. What they buy is the emotional thing. They right. buy the status. They buy the ability to post the best pictures and have the greatest camera. But the the, the delivery of that is through the offer is the excuse we give to everyone else when we actually buy the thing, right? When they sign up for the thing. So that's kind of a, a new way to look at things. I think there's not a lot of people teaching this part of it, but that's really going to help you maybe clarify like, what is your offer? How are you connecting emotionally? What is it that your potential students or their parents desire? And then how are you delivering that? What is the logical excuse that they end up signing up for classes? So any questions on this? Is this making sense? This landing with you guys? We can go deep on this. We can kind of gloss over this stuff. I want to keep it. I want to keep a pace, uh, but I want to make sure that you're getting this. So uh <laughs> yeah we got some yeah confirmation on the cell phone stuff right hey we're teaching a you know kind of just a personal thing my, my daughter's done a lot of stuff my she's turning nine tomorrow and she, she's done a lot of things no worries alana glad you're here um and when she was younger like she did dance she did martial arts she did all kinds of activities and the goal of those activities was outside of what the actual activity was, right? We got her into martial arts when she was younger because she was just not listening at home. And we knew that that was a way to create structure and discipline. Uh, we got her into dance because she was just honestly just not very coordinated. She was just kind of all over the place. Um, and we knew like as a kid, she had she had a vision issue when she was an infant, which caused her body to develop a little bit differently as far as balance and things go. So we got her into dance to solve that problem. Now we loved both of those things. And Honestly, some of those things were subconscious to us, but that was what our emotional desire was. Um, because if it was just dance or like the cell phone being cheap, AT and T would just have an advertisement with what their rates are. <laughs> right? right, we would just have an advertisement with here's our rates and here's the benefit of our rates by our by our plan. Right, because the phone is free if you notice. Right. They use the th the emotional thing, the thing that's getting you to want to be there. They usually give that part away for free because they know that's the thing that's kind of drawing you in. So, yeah. Great point. Great point. Awesome. So what we're going to be doing now is kind of diving into the heart of your promotions, showing you how to maximize the ROI, uh, return on investment for those of you that don't like buzzwords. Um, but what I want to do right now is just kind of walk you through some of that stuff. So, and I love taking you on the sort of imagination journey, right? So I want you to really just first imagine a scenario, which this could be new for a lot of school owners, where every dollar that you invest into ads actually multiplies into enrollments. I think a lot of times we think of advertising as like some expense, right? Where it's like, yeah, this is a line item on my budget. I have to spend money on the advertising because I know I'm supposed to. But when we start looking at it as an investment where it should multiply, that's maybe a new way to look at advertising. So it should come back with babies. <laughs> yes, exactly. Right. Marketing is the one thing on your line item budget that shouldn't be a line item. It should be an investment that you know is going to multiply, that's going to bring in more growth, more students. And, and that's really what it's about. It's a catalyst for that growth. So return on investment. I'm sure you guys have probably heard that term ROI. It's really this ecosystem, right? And so we're going to be going through some targeting strategies, messaging, and how to align that messaging with your school, with your students. A lot of this stuff is kind of buzzy words, right? I don't really like using buzzwords or like anything like that jargon. So, we're, you know, we're going to be really just showing you how to unlock a return on your investment throughout that cycle. So, you know, from the time you spend money on ads to how it comes back in enrollments and revenue, and it's calculatable and it's predictable. Yeah. It, it's really, it's really not as complicated as it sounds. Um, but let's talk about audience for a second. John, because, before you get into audience, okay, if I yeah. jump in here. So as we kind of put these pieces together, this is all part of a, a, all cogs in a system. So we've talked about kind of the offer and you might be saying, well, hey, well, what is, what is the good offer that creates emotion? We're going to, we're going to get all the cogs set up and then we're going to connect the dots. So you can see, cause if it was just the offer or it was just the ad spend or something like that, and these independent silos, then people could just be selling these independent silos and that would be it. 
we want to make sure we understand that how the cogs are built before we turn on the machine so you guys can see how all these things are going to operate independent not independently of each other but actually together in in synchrony synchrony synchronicity synchronicity that's what i was looking for i'll google it while you're talking okay thank you <laughs> uh audience simplicity this is something that is so huge especially on facebook right now that is being taught completely wrong and people are out there doing all sorts of crazy things that they shouldn't be doing because they're trying to complicate their audience so i wanted to talk through this because i want you to really be able to see um you know facebook will technically let you target like all sorts of interests all sorts of metrics demographics behaviors so like literally this is a you could literally set up an audience that you're only advertising to rich parents who love reptiles and snowboarding. <laughs> and they used to live in El Salvador. Like I, I swear to, you can literally market to those people if you wanted to. But the problem with that is that used to be very valuable in things like dropping mail. So like I used to actually own a direct mail company and we used to have to really kind of you know, slim down the list to a small number of people because we only wanted to mail postcards to the right people. Facebook's algorithm does that for us almost automatically now. So we use a thing called broad targeting. So if you're taking notes, that's probably something you want to write down, broad targeting. What broad targeting means is that you're not targeting it to people who are interested in sports or people interested in dance or people interested in martial arts or whatever, you know, whatever your fitness you don't need to target those people because what that will do is actually make your audience too small for the algorithm to actually work. Those interest things are very valuable to, to businesses that go nationwide. When we market, our business is nationwide. We, we use those interests because we don't want to target an ice cream parlor owner because they don't have students, right? <laughs> we're only targeting businesses that need to attract students because that's what we're good at. As a, as a small local business, if you own a some type of school, like a martial arts school or a dance school, a music school, the area around that people are willing to drive to your school is not large enough for you to start whittling down the list so small. So broad targeting is much more effective. And with that size of an audience, um, usually typically around 50 to 100,000 people in that audience, that's perfect for Facebook's algorithm to just figure out as it starts to display that ad, who should it actually target? Like you can just target women and it will figure out who the moms are in that audience. It's amazing. It's become so much easier. Um, so just to kind of give you some, maybe some hope that like it's not as complicated as you may have thought. So broad right. targeting, definitely much better than interest targeting. And so the other piece of that puzzle is the message to market match. First of all, let me back up. Any questions about targeting on Facebook? Who are we looking to get to? Facebook specifically, but you know, really anywhere. Um, the broad targeting. I think we typically, you know, are targeting on Facebook women. Yeah, a lot of times there's the the desire to target uh, economic status, which actually has changed recently. Um, yeah. The desire, so we kind of. We get into this mindset of I only want to target the exact type of people that I want coming to my doors, and that's the only target I want to have. I want to have um, students that are 12 to 14 years old, or students that are 30 to 32. So I'm going to target them that make this much money, that are this racial ethnicity, and have this college background. And we get kind of caught up in all those little tiny things. That's what I again I've talked to thousands of school owners, so right. that's what I hear a lot. Socioeconomic is a big one, um, but really we can just let the algorithm do what it needs to do. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Cool. All right. Looks like you got no questions. We'll move on. So talking about uh, message to market mash and what this really means is just having a message that resonates with the people in your audience. Uh, that's, you know, usually probably potential students or their parents. And it's some type of message that's going to take them to want to take immediate action. And we're going to get into what that actually looks like, but this is the thought process that we're going through to get to where we're going to show you here uh, on this webinar. So the thing the thing really to remember is that complexity almost always hinders progress. So if we can embrace a clear, uh, effective way to do this and a process that works incredibly well year round, the nice thing about that is if we simplify it down to the just the stuff that works, we don't have to change it for back to school. We don't have to change it for Christmas. We don't have to change it for New Year's or Thanksgiving or Halloween or uh, Fourth of July. We keep it the same because it's 
simple, right? And then you're not having to train. If you're not the one doing intro lessons, you're not having to train your staff every season. What offer are we doing right now? What's the special? What's this every month? I Sometimes I see, uh, you know, I drive past a lot of martial arts schools, a lot of dance studios, and they all have different signs out front for every season. The back to school is special. It's a end of summer special. It's this special. And that's great. You can still do that stuff. But the idea is when you're digitally marketing, the longer something can run, the better, the simpler it can be, the longer it lasts. And so all that stuff kind of definitely ties together. So really what we're just trying to get across here is simplicity, clarity, embracing effectiveness. And I know a lot of us are very creative type people. We want to always be creating new things yes. and that's great. We do that stuff in the school though, not in our right. advertising. Spend that energy they, on awesome classes, right? Yes. yes. Um, you know, Rachel asked a great question as far as, okay, well, if I keep it, you know, pretty simple, it might attract people that aren't going to be in my, in my desired niche, right? It's not going to be in, like Rachel, for example, said if she's, uh, she could, you know, target adults and then to, to get kids, but then adults think it's for adults. There's different parts of this process, mm. Rachel, and really anybody is that um, there's little tiny pieces that will naturally filter down. So if you only have a kid's program, you can still obviously target parents because they're the ones making the decisions, but the images you use in your media should be kids, right? No, no yes. 25 year old is going to see, you know, eight year olds dancing and be like, oh, I can't wait to sign up for that class. Oh, I hope not. Hopefully not. Yeah. Let's not be yeah. a part of that class. So the, <laughs> there's another kind of part of that's why it's all these cogs in the same system yes. is we don't need to target specifically in the, in the audience. We can have that filter out by the media that we include in our marketing. So, and, um, and then Chris said, if you get those, you can just send them to him. He'll, yeah. he'll sign up. The <laughs> <There you go. laughs> but yeah, all community these little we're cogs can work where we can actually start to reach a really dedicated audience in very simple ways. If we just have a few simple things happening together and are, that are connected, then it will naturally just filter these things out for you. Definitely. Definitely. So I'd love to hear from you guys, maybe some specific challenges you've had with maybe you spent money on advertising and you didn't see the type of return that you want. I love to hear some real stories because we love to dive into like actual scenarios with you. So if you are willing to, and you're brave enough to share some experiences that you've had, maybe you've invested in uh, advertising that hasn't worked. Maybe it has worked great. Maybe you did something that worked really good uh, five years ago and it's not working now. Maybe you still have something going right now that's working really well. I'd love to just kind of hear what your experience has been like um, because we would love, love to kind of tailor the rest of this around some of the experiences for you guys here. So this is a unique opportunity for you to be on here. You know, this is a very small group um, that's on with us live right now between all the different platforms, you know, it's, yeah. it's a pretty intimate, uh, setting. And, you know, this is a great time for you to just get some insight specifically for your school, um, yeah. directly from us. So, uh, Michael is saying that he's starting fresh off the ground. So this is, this is a, a new chapter, new page, new book. Yep. Um, not able to generate leads. I love when it's kind of fresh off the ground because it's the best. It's kind of like getting a student that has never been taught before. You don't have a lot of bad habits to break. Yes. <laughs> um, so this yes. is definitely, in fact, we've seen probably the most success with school owners that it's this is fresh. They've never marketed before or it's a brand new school um, because a lot of the things that they've told themselves aren't there. And they're not in the way of, of implementing a system to be able to grow. So yeah, same thing with Chris. Place to be. So that's I great. So a, if that's you, that's awesome. But if it's not you, that's okay too. Just like, mm -hmm. again, you get students in that have been taught bad things. You know that you can get them right on, on track as long as they you know can follow kind of your coaching and your expertise. So I'm very curious about some of those experiences and, and what challenges you guys are facing in, in maximizing. Because that was kind of the title of the, of the, of the um, workshop, right? Like how to maximize this type of enrollment process and how to maximize enrollment because we all get people back to school, right? Back to school, we we naturally get people. Uh, after the after the new year, we naturally get people. How do we maximize that to make sure we're getting as many people as possible when there's the natural desire, but then also make that a process that can work year round, that it does is not relying on things that are going on outside of us. How do we maximize a process that makes those natural ebbs and flows be better, but also makes the the ebb the down part be consistently moving upwards so i'm curious what kind of challenges is it seasonal for you is it hey i don't know how i don't know i, I put money into things i don't know if it's working i have no idea how to track that or i don't know what offer i'm constantly having to change offers um he's got a very good curious. question 
So ahead, yeah. Jesse asking, how can you qualify out low income leads when the zip codes are in the same as wealthy communities? It's a great question. We hear the zip code question quite a bit from anybody who's either works with like an agency or worked with uh, another marketer or gotten inside to Facebook and actually tried to like dial in where they're targeting their go by zip codes. So um, here's the funniest thing that uh, this might be counterintuitive to you, Jesse, but um, sometimes the low income areas are actually the best students. And because I, I'm telling you, I have seen this over and over and over and over again. When you have a school that's in a higher income area. So like, let's say you have two cities and this part of the city or this area, this zip code is like the poor area. And this is the wealthier, better off area, right? People will drive and go to like this, the, the poor section of town, they go to the rich section of town to go out to eat. They go because that's where they desire to be usually. Going the other way is harder. If you have a school that's in a poor area and you want people from the rich area to drive to you, that's tougher, right? But if you're trying to actually disqualify the people who might be the best ones for your school, the yep. other part of that is um, they need it more <laughs> than than some of the rich kids. Yeah. So they will, when they commit to it, it's a commitment and they understand better that they need to commit to it and they'll make room in the budget for it. Now, obviously if there's like extreme poverty going on, you know, chances are they're not even going to try to come in, but what'll happen is the way that the process is set up. And as we get into it, you're going to see more of it, but sometimes I'll, I'll t I can tell you hundreds of stories of people who wanted to prejudge somebody because they pulled up in a jalopy. Is that still a word? People still use that for a broken down car. That was, that was yeah, I think we're all old enough in here. Yeah. <laughs> 10 years, maybe not. Okay. <laughs> they pull up in a jalopy with grubby clothes on. Travis has a great story. If you'd share that one, Travis used to work at a bank. Do you yeah. know the story I'm talking about? Yeah. They, I worked at a bank and there was a guy that came in a lot and uh, Friday's big payday and you get a lot of day laborers and things like that, cashing checks that are drawn to that bank. And I can't tell you how many people, myself included, would judge, hey, who's coming in based on what they're wearing. And one guy came in and, you know, you sit there and think, okay, well, this guy, you know, just here to cash a check, you know, cash his, his check that he got written uh, for that week's worth of work. I mean, I opened up his account and there's like $8 million in there. He owned this really large landscaping company because, but he was engaged with it. And just from the other side of things, as I was a teacher for a very long time and a coach, a, a, I coached football and lacrosse parents that are dealing with poverty. I don't want to get all, you know, I'm, a, I'm big into sociology. It's one of the things I taught, I taught is that people that are dealing with, with, economic issues are actually real about those emotional things we talked about earlier. They understand that little Johnny needs discipline help. Someone that has a lot of money can actually disguise little Johnny's discipline problem because they can just they can just buy his discipline for a couple of weeks, right? They can buy him an Xbox or a PlayStation 5 and he's good for a couple of weeks. So they actually don't realize that Johnny has a discipline problem. Whereas someone that can't mask their issues with money, actually they know, hey, little Johnny needs help. So they appreciate or little Susie or whoever they appreciate those emotional um, needs more than people that have money. And I don't, I mean, we can get all into, you know, the, the socioeconomic <laughs> aspects of all that, but we found time and time again, what John's talking about is school owners that have people that have, you know, quote unquote financial issues. They actually are willing to pay more because they value the character change that comes from being a part of some of these programs. So hopefully that helps Jesse. I know you said you love the insight. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of, a little insight there. We do have a lot of questions coming in, Jesse. If there's more for that, please don't hesitate to, to type it in. Um, but Nick wants to know, as far as we look at audience, what is your suggested target spend to acquire new students? So how much would you spend in that audience to determine, hey, this is a good audience, John. Um, you know, how much would I spend to get a new student in ads? Basically, I put money in. How much should it cost me to get a student out if it's a good audience? Okay. So I'm going to be controversial here. Um, less than it then you collect from that student is how much you should spend to acquire it. <laughs> does that answer your question? If you can collect a hundred dollars, then you should spend less than a hundred dollars to get that student. If you are going to make $3,000, you should spend less than $3,000 to get that student in. And we have actually some formulas that we recommend. I typically like to spend less than what I collect in the first month. So if in the first month you're going to collect $67 as a trial, then you should spend less than $67 to acquire that student um, in ads because that's called a flywheel. If you can spend less than it, 
if you can make more than you're spending, your marketing budget is completely replenished and renewed every time you enroll a new student. They're basically paying for themselves. Um, so that's how much I would suggest. So it depends on how much you're charging. It depends on your area. Um, and, and it could it could cause you to say, I need to charge more because it costs me this much to acquire a student. So I need to charge this much. And that sometimes is a kind of a nice wake up call too. So we actually have some calculators for that stuff within our program. If you guys want a copy of the calculator, should I give one out, Travis? What do you think? Is this too many? Are we giving away too much? Let's give one out. If you guys want the calculator that tells you how much you should charge based on the demographics of your area, we've done studies. We've studied thousands of martial arts schools. Sean, I'm going to hold you off on the calculator. Okay. Hold me off. I'm going to include that in something else a little bit later. Oh yeah. Right. Hang tight. Okay. Hang tight. Yeah. Just keep in mind, we have a calculator that calculates based on your zip code, your, uh, your county, your city, uh, what we found, we can give you the statistics of what schools charge in that area. So we know what, we have all the data because we've surveyed. Uh, what do you think, Travis? How many schools? 5,000, 8,000 schools? At least, yeah. Somewhere in there, yeah. Yeah. And what the one question we ask every single one of them is how much are you charging? So we know. We have the statistics on that. Um, okay. Now, somebody else says, if you teach great classes, low-income families will find the money. Amen. Who said that? Sensei Mish. That is 100% true. Uh, guitar teacher, 40 years who taught in a fluent area. Yep. Okay. Awesome. Just good. Agrees, agrees, agrees. Love it. Awesome. Great, great, great. Any other questions in here, Travis? Am I missing something? No, I think we're good. We can, good. We can keep Let's it going. It. And for okay. the sake of everybody's time, we definitely want to make sure we get everything clear. We know you guys have stuff going on on Sunday. So there might be some stuff we kind of hit real hard because we don't want to miss it. But at the same time, if, if there's a question comes up, th throw it in there and we'll get it clarified. Absolutely. So let's jump into how to get rid of the sleazy tactics. We'll talk about embracing some genuine approaches that actually resonate with both your school and your audience. So they're not feeling like you're uh, some kind of like used car salesman and uh, authenticity is kind of, it's been used as a buzzword. I hear it a lot, like in the marketing circles, but it's really, it is the core of a successful promotion. You've got to be authentic and we're going to explore some of that stuff and how to promote without being sleazy, how to align your promotions with your school and your values so that this connection actually goes above just like how much does you have on your credit card? Okay, let's run it. You know, that's not really what you got into being a school in the first place. And so we're going to show you how to get past all that stuff. And stories, I think there's a lot of people talking about stories too, right? Stories do have the power to captivate and connect. And we're going to show you how to weave stories and actually how to harness some of that power uh, of storytelling that doesn't even really have to take place right there. You can build it right into the offer and build it right into the vehicle to where you don't have to be like some great storyteller to actually get these stories weaved into your promotions and weaved into uh, even the lives of the people that you're communicating with. And so we're going to debunk a bunch of crap about sales pitches and you know this whole thing where people think, oh, you just have to pitch, 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 and follow up, follow up, follow up, and chase people around town until they sign up for your classes. There's no need to do that stuff. It's not actually very effective long-term. It's yep. It leads to a big thing called burnout, which we don't want, right? We want long-term solutions. And so yep. we're going to get past all that stuff. So we're not going to be persuading we're not going to be doing any kind of like, don't take no for an answer. Yeah. <laughs> that stuff's so old and it's not effective. It doesn't work anymore. And so we're we going to really just show you how to present an opportunity that's genuinely enriching for the lives of your students. We'll give you the keys to that stuff. We're going to promote, uh, show you how to promote authentically while making that uh, really great uh, improvement to the lives of the people in your audience. And so it really, it all kind of boils down to dialogue and it really comes down to how you're communicating with your audience. And I'd love if this is a neat thought exercise, if you would in, uh, just indulge me for a second. Think about a time when a company has advertised to you and you felt like it was an authentic dialogue. Have you ever been the recipient, been advertised to, been sort of the lead in a promotion where you felt like, you know what? I'm really actually engaged in this and I actually want to be a part of this. Can anybody think of a time or a, a situation where you were being advertised to and you thought, this is actually, this really feels like a dialogue and I'm very, I'm feeling very like this is authentic. Anybody, anybody want to share anything? Love to just hear in the comments, just type the name of the company or just give yeah. us a little bit of uh, feedback. I, I love this kind of interaction. Oh, look at that. Somebody says with you all, I feel that way. Awesome. Well, Hey, I appreciate that. 
I appreciate that. Thanks. Jesse I appreciate that. Anything. Yeah. I, re- I that really honestly was not a fishing for compliments. I was hoping you'd say something like, you know, one time in the eighties, Coca-Cola sent me a letter or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I appreciate that. That's great. So, I mean, you know, we obviously eat our own dog food. We practice what we preach and we want you to feel like this is a dialogue because it is like, this is how we promote our business. This is how we've grown to the size we've grown to uh, because we are actually trying to engage with you in an in authentic way and not in a way that is just like, how much do you have left on your credit card? Let's run it for that amount. Welcome to the program. We don't even, we don't even do that. So, um, and, and the interesting thing about this is conversations uh, are what really weaves a story together, but it's not like you can tell the story, but the stories actually, you know, take place outside of those conversations. And so you've got to really guide the the conversation away So that the people that you're talking to have the ability and the opportunity to experience the story. And a lot of that stuff takes place outside of those conversations. You know, you'll, the stories take place with your leads on the side of the soccer field, right? They're taking place at the grocery store in the checkout line when the gal pals are getting together and talking about what the little kids are doing. And so you have an opportunity to control the direction of those stories just by two things, the right offer and the right vehicle. And we're actually going to walk you through like step-by-step what that stuff is on this webinar here. Um, But I just want you to keep in mind, like there's a lot of marketers talking about telling stories. We're not talking about that. We're talking about the real stories that are being told, you know, outside of the conversations. So, okay. You guys have the philosophy. Any questions on the philosophy before we jump into the actual like nuts and bolts of things. We're going to show you what this actually looks like in practice, but any questions about some of the stuff we've been through already? Chat those in. Did we miss any miss any questions? I think we're good. I think we're good. Okay. If you have questions, feel free to put them in the chat. Um, but let's talk about the most important factors of creating advertising. There's three things. So if you're a note taker, this is a writer downer. Audience offer vehicle. And we've talked about those three things quite a bit, right? So let's talk about, um, you know, I think one of the biggest mistakes that school owners make is they start with the wrong part of this process. They start, which one, which part do you think they start with? Which part do you start with when you start advertising? What do you think? Anybody want to take a guess? What's the wrong place to start that most people start? Okay. Offer. A lot of people do start with the offer. I would say that's probably the wrong place to start. Yep. Anybody else? I think most people start with the vehicle. And and since we haven't defined really what those things are, it might be a little bit tough. Yes. The vehicle. Thank you, Carl. Carl. Yes. Vehicle. Exactly. A lot of people start with the vehicle. What good is it starting with the vehicle uh, if we don't start with the audience first. We don't even know who we're talking to. <laughs> right. We're like, hey, we have this free thing over here. It's like, for who? Right. <laughs> so the audience is the most important. First right. thing we got to determine. It's actually uh, the first question when I get onto a call with someone to see if, hey, can we help? Is, hey, who are you trying to bring in the doors? Yeah. I can't tell you how many studio owners, and this isn't anybody's fault. It's just no one's ever showed them that this is important. They like pause and they're like, you know what? I've never actually thought about who I'm trying to bring in the doors. Well, yes. <laughs> we need to know, right? We need to know, hey, who do we want to attract? Definitely. Yes. Right. Or or they'll say something like, well, everybody, anybody. Right. This is for everyone. Right. That's great. Which is is not a bad answer, but it's like, have you determined that, right? Have you actually sat down and thought about who are we trying to speak to? Because if we don't know who we're trying to speak to, we don't know what offer to have. We don't know what vehicle to have out there. We, you know, it it, it gets the rest of the system kind of all over the place. Right. Right. And I think I, I've seen so many ads and uh, I'll actually show you a couple of examples here, but I've seen so many that talk about the program or talk about the instructor or the lineage or the education that they have or some other thing that primarily has to do with the vehicle. Right. We see a lot of ads like that. Um, maybe you've even run some ads like that if we're being transparent, um, but not talking to an actual audience. And so as we approach the audience, um, I think maybe now we've kind of gotten the handle on who we should be targeting, right? If you're teaching kids programs, who do you think the audience is? This is a, this is a giveaway question. Come on, you guys know this one already. (laughs) (laughs) Who are we targeting? Who is the person that we want to put our ad in front of? If you could have a conversation, parents. Yes, Chris, thank you. Thank you. Chris. Parents is a good 
It's there we go. Now they're coming in. There we go. Good. Maybe there's a little it's bit like of that old Saturday Night Live skit where someone gets it right and everybody raises their answer. They're like, uh, I was going to say parents. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. Yeah, <laughs> that's good. All women, you, good. women, especially too. Yep, yes, for the women, especially for sure. Leading the initiative on this. Yep. Thank you, guys. Per- definitely. So if we're looking at that and if the audience is women, moms, parents. Right. And this is in this example is if we're trying to target students under the age of 12. We're probably looking for parents, right? And the audience is actually, you know, moms who live around your school. Because what we found is, especially on Facebook, moms tend to be uh, more engaged on Facebook, less uh, concerned about like putting in their information on a form on Facebook. It's just an easier audience to reach. And I think it might have something to do with the sort of maternal, like always. If you look at moms, they're always looking for out for their kids first, right? Dads, like I'm a dad of two. I, 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 of course, I'm always looking out for the best of my children, but like scrolling on Facebook, it's probably not the first thing in my mind, but with moms, I think it is. So credit to them. They're a better audience for us to be targeting. Um, and that's just from a statistics point of view. I can't tell you why specifically. I haven't dove into the psychology of it, but I, what I can tell you is we run an ad to moms and we run out to dads, the mom's ad always does better than the dads. I can't tell you exactly why that is a fact though. And so the nice thing is we don't even have to specifically target parents, right? We can just target women because the Facebook algorithm will figure it out. These are broad targeting on that. Um, and, uh, like I said, we do have a formula for this. Yeah. Motherly instinct. Thank you, Chris. Yes, for sure. So if our audience is moms who live near your school, right? What's the offer? So if you remember, the offer is what are they going to gain? What's the emotional thing they're going to get? So if you want to give us a little bit of that in the chat, this is a little bit of a tougher question. I'm challenging you guys a little bit more. This is actually a great way to learn. Even if you even if you chat in the wrong answer, um, you can still pass the class, guys. So <laughs> you stay through the end and you pass the class. <laughs> but what do you think is a good offer? What are we offering them? What does your program deliver? Now, we don't want to talk about how we deliver it, right? The program, maybe the special, but what's the offer? What are we giving the parents? What are we delivering to them? This is a challenging one. I'll I'll give you that. It's a challenging one. Discipline, but ooh, Paul. Paul, coming out of the gate strong. Discipline, (laughs) better grades, et cetera. That's good. Emotional desire. Yes. What's yep. the emotional desire? What are, What is the offer that parents want? I think Paul nailed it right there. Discipline, better grades, et cetera. Yep. It's the things that everybody wants for their kids, right? right. It's focus. It's self-esteem, self-confidence, right? It's those things. That's the offer. So if you see an ad that doesn't say, hey, parents, you can get this stuff then you can identify now and say, hey, this is not really a very good ad. And when you're creating an ad, you know you want to include. These are the things that my audience is desiring. Focus, discipline, self-confidence. Okay, there we go. Discipline, focus, self-confidence. Yes, I had it in the slides. Yep. <laughs> this is what yeah. the moms want, right? Intrinsic motivation. Yes, leadership, definitely a great one. Positive peer community, friends, for sure. Yes, fun, yep. that kind of stuff. Excellent. Okay, finally... Let's talk about the vehicle. The vehicle is the easy one, right? So the vehicle is um, how do you deliver discipline? How do you deliver focus, self-confidence? What's the thing that gives them? So that's sort of, you know, that's part of the vehicle. But the other part is what's the excuse, the logical excuse that moms will tell each other of why they signed up for your classes. They're not going to say, I wanted little Johnny to have more focus, self-confidence and discipline. They're going to say what? They're going to give you an excuse. And this is where the, why shouldn't I do this comes into play. So if we think about the vehicle, what's the vehicle? A lot of you guys were nailing this earlier when you're talking about giving way more value than the money, right? I'm giving you some clues here, but what do we think about the vehicle? What do you think the best vehicle could possibly be to deliver discipline, focus, self-confidence in your program? It's the best. What's an irresistible vehicle? How can you just take away all the objections? Anybody? There's a lot of you on here. Somebody's got to have an answer. Let's say, uh, let me, 
I want to check out Netflix. I've never had Netflix before. What's the best way Netflix can get me to check it out and see <laughs> this is awesome. There, there we, we go. go. Yeah. All right. Paul's on fire today. Paul's got a couple of them yeah. in the pocket. He's in been on pocket. our webinars before. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's okay. That's, all that's right. good, man. That's good. That's good. Yes. The free week actually is the best vehicle that we found. The free week pass uh, by far destroys all other vehicles that we've ever tried. We've tried free weeks. We've tried free month. We've tried free class. We've tried $29 for two weeks. We've tried six weeks for 69. We've tried five weeks for 55. I mean, I could spout them off all day here. I could tell you all the different ways and all the different vehicles we've tried. The free week is by far the biggest winner. And the reason is because it removes all the barriers. It takes away all the objections, right? They don't have to think about it. They don't have to go talk to their spouse. They don't yep. have to go grab their wallet or research your facility. It's just an absolute no brainer. And all they have to do is give their conf- contact information to give it. And it, it is a logical excuse. Sorry, John. Sorry. I don't know. Go ahead. It, go it ahead. attracts a big group of people that are a good fit for your school. If I do a limited offer, like, hey, a $39 a month trial or, or whatever, like a paid offer or something like that. That's going to attract some people. That's going to attract people that are already interested in a school like yours. Um, and you might get some people from that. But it deters people that have never thought about coming in your doors because they're not going to spend money on something that they haven't, hasn't even crossed their mind. Free week attracts those people, but a free week also attracts people that have thought about coming. So it attracts everybody. It attracts people that are brand new to your craft. It attracts people that have already kind of been thinking about it, which is perfect because that's what I want. I want people in the door that want to come in the doors. And so it really just eliminates any type of, when we talk about audience, this is really going to hone down on people that look like and are interested in coming in through your doors. Right. And the other good news about that is the, if you're advertising on Facebook, the algorithm actually looks for people who have already converted as a lead. So they've given you name, email, phone number. That data goes back to Facebook's super smart computers. And it says, okay, this is the type of person that does this, that wants this free week pass. Let's go find some more people in this audience that like this too. And it it is right. so smart at figuring out who is like that. And it's called optimizing for leads. It's an easy setting on Facebook. Um, and it actually figures out the more leads you get, the better it gets at finding more leads. So it's like a, it's another flywheel. So um, just a quick summary. If we're targeting local moms, the offer is to have their kids have disciplines, focus, self-confidence, and the vehicle is the free week, right? So before we go into anything else, I'm going to start showing you some actual ads that I found. Facebook has this thing called their ad library where you can actually go and spy on everybody that's advertising on Facebook and see what kind of ads they're running. And I found some doozies. I'm going to share those with you right now so we can learn from some people's mistakes. I blurred out the, uh, I redacted some information. So hopefully nobody on this webinar is getting picked on. I I promise I didn't specifically target any schools. I just went into the ads library and picked out some doozies, but we'll pick them apart a little bit. But before we do that, any questions, missing anything, um, you can go ahead and chat that stuff in. I'm going to just jump in because we're kind of going a little bit long, but that's good. I think that's everybody's engaged here. So, yep. okay. So let's look at this ad. So this ad, I'll give you what it said is why do, and then it had a town's name. Why do, you know, so-and-so parents love martial arts. And they give a nice long checklist. It's family friendly schedule, uh, family friendly schedule and class times, supportive community. Okay. Anybody see what's missing from this ad? What do you guys think? Remember the three aspects offer. Mm -hmm. I would say we got audience here. Interesting. Yes, call definitely action. missing. Yeah. Definitely missing a call to action. We didn't even get to that. Look at this. Somebody, somebody from Deep Water Jiu Jitsu did some marketing studies before. No offer. <laughs> Girls, no okay. offer. Yep. Interesting. Interesting. So, vehicle. Paul, man, Paul with the home runs, dude. Okay, so <laughs> this ad actually does have a bit of an offer down here. It's kind of hidden down here, so it's not where I would put it. I'd probably put it up top, but it does have focus, confidence, and discipline, which are some of the things we already talked about as an offer, right? But how are we getting this? Right. There's there's no deliver, there's no vehicle, there's no clear way. Like, what do I get if I click learn more? It looks like they're just looking for like maybe I'll go read a blog post about it. I don't know. <laughs> interesting. Here's a couple more. Um, or here's another one. Sorry, that one was already there. Attention blank parents. So we have an audience, right? 
We're here to teach your child martial arts while having fun. For a limited time, we're offering two weeks. So we have our vehicle. Not really any, uh, not really off- and an offer on there, is there? Maybe yeah. having fun, I guess, is kind of an offer. But is that an emotional enough response? The parents want their kids to have so much fun that that triggers an emotion in them? I don't think so. Probably not. Right. Probably not. And this and is great then, evidence of how all these things are. They're small little pieces, right? We can be great at running a Facebook ad. We can be, we know all the technical aspects of meta as manager. There's right. just these little tiny pieces that if they, they just need to be connected the right way to really just generate consistent. Cause some of these ads, they might get a few students when they first launch, but to get something consistent long-term, there's these little things that are just a little off that need to be tweaked. So all the systems working together. Right. And that's why I wanted to dive into the philosophy on this webinar. Cause we typically kind of gloss over it, but I think, you know, if you don't understand the why and you try to do the what, it's a little bit difficult to figure out how to do it. So here's a couple of more examples. Uh, we'll kind of burn through these, but this one has an audience. Okay. Um, but I don't know what's going on in the rest of these. <laughs> There's no offer here. There's no vehicle. Here's what we offer. Like this is, I guess we offer dance class for all ages. Everyone is welcome. Remember we talked about this. Who are we targeting? It says parents, but then it says everyone. There's too much on this, right? This one is all vehicle. Who said that, Carl? Uh, yeah, we offer best dance classes for kids in the community. Actually, yeah, all vehicle. No one's more passionate about teaching children, right? This is all about the school. It has nothing. There's no offer. There's no right. audience. We don't know who they're talking about. And then the last one cracks me up. And I've seen, this is actually, I've seen a lot of ads like this. I guess maybe mostly about the vehicle, but it's in all caps, first of all, <laughs> which, which is always, inter- that's internet code for yelling, right? Yeah. <laughs> we have some of the most elite teachers in the blank area. Yeah. We only which, hire artists, right? Which if, if you've launched an ad like this before, this isn't criticism of no. you, but it probably just led to, okay, you probably got a couple of students from it and you're probably feeling good because like the second ad, if I'm a dancer in the community, and I'm looking for a new dance score. I just moved. Yeah, this is this stands out. But what about the hundreds of other people that haven't danced in a while or aren't looking for something new or something right. like that? So not a criticism of you. It's just no one's no. really ever explained to you that, hey, these things add up together to get right. results. Yes. And I crack up at it because it's like so ingrained in my head. It's like if you right. were to watch somebody go out and like if you were to try and watch me do like a black belt form or, or dance, I'd love to see you dance, John. Yeah, you will not see me dance. <laughs> <laughs> or do a black belt form, either one. Uh, I will market circles around everybody, but to do any either one of those, you would be cracking up and you'd be like, look at his foot, look at his stance, look at this, yeah. he looks ridiculous. Yeah. So, you know, I crack up because I know it so well and you guys are starting to learn it now. So hopefully it's cracking you up as well. So now I want to show you an ad that has been responsible for generating 300,000 leads. This is the exact well, ad copy that we use. And before you dive into that, John, I'm, I'm excited for you guys. When you jump off this webinar, you're going to start seeing ads for your, your rivals and people in the area. Hopefully you start looking at them and you go, oh my gosh, what are they doing? What are they doing? And it's not criticism. It just, yeah. it's coming from a place of confidence that you know what right. needs to happen. And it's just a good feeling when you, when you have that confidence. And it will help you. Cause I think a lot of times people copy what their competitors are doing without knowing if it's working or not. Right. They're like that school has been running this special for three years. That doesn't actually mean. Uh, and they're full. So it must be working. Meanwhile, <laughs> I, I can't tell you how many school owners I've talked to like, Oh, well the people down the road, their classes are full and they're running this ad. So I just copied their ad. Well, their classes are full because like the superintendent of the school district is a member and Could he be. basically forces everyone to, you know, take dance classes. Yeah. And, right. You never know. Right. Um, you don't know. If meanwhile, they're right. at, cause I've talked, it's funny. I've talked to school owners when they say, Oh, the school down the road is full. So their ads must be kill- killing it. And I actually talked to that school a few months before and their yeah. ads were d- just not killing it. They were just blowing money, but they yeah. didn't know what else to do. So it's great that you guys are getting that clarity. Sorry. Yes. Go ahead, John. That, let's dive into what works. Yeah, I see Elena has invited me to come train with uh, them. So <laughs> get my there forms all fixed up. <laughs> Excellent. Great. Love it. Uh, okay, so let's dive into this ad. And I want to show you why this ad is working. It has these things. It has a clear audience. It has a clear vehicle, a clear offer, and a nice call to action, which somebody brought up earlier. Um, oftentimes, you'll see an ad that has the three of those and it doesn't say click to learn more. And then you'll see why is my click rate so low? Well, 90% of people need to know exactly what am I supposed to do next? 
They scroll, they, they read an again. ad, they go, that's nice, wonderful. <laughs> but they actually don't click because they don't know they're supposed to click. Right. To get it. Um, or they'll comment on the ad or they'll do Listen, something. Listen, if people go in the wrong door with the big sign on it that says use other door, yeah, they definitely need to know multiple times exactly what to do. So <laughs> that's a great, that's a great analogy. Or they grab the door and they yank yeah. on the handle and they look at you like, are you open or what? Yeah. And then there's a heat. That's They're evidence that not only you need it here, but you need it on the headline <laughs> and stuff like that too. So yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, so hopefully you can kind of see, and you know, I, I've seen some schools try to just grab this and go rip it and run it. And that's great. You can try that. Be my guest. Um, there's more to it than just that. And so hopefully you can see it speaks, you know, the reason this ad is successful and has worked for so long is because it speaks directly to the audience. It shows them, it delivers exactly what they want. It removes all the barriers. We run that ad 365 days a year to this day. It's unbeatable. I've tried so many times to beat it. It can't be beat, um, at least for the stuff that we've tried yet. And we're always trying to beat it. Um, we've tested everything, but the real secret and the real magic happens with the process built around that. Because we have seen schools verbatim run that ad. And then they come back to us and usually say something like, hey, I got a bunch of leads, but I couldn't get anybody enrolled. All the leads were unqualified, you know, blah, blah, blah. So really there's a system built around all of that. In the grand scheme of things, you know, this ad is definitely the biggest lever you can pull in the process, but um, it's it's only responsible for about one fourth of the actual process. So if you look at the big picture, you know, you've got the ad running for the free week. That's great. We book intro lessons within the first seven days, and then we upgrade to a paid trial on day one. So that's kind of the overview of our big process. And um, so I, I guess for, at this point, we're kind of running into about an hour's time that we've yeah. been on here, and we still have a great crowd on <laughs> pretty much. Yeah, everybody's here. Awesome. So um, dive in some questions on this, and we can really kind of get into the right. If we don't need to cover anything specifically in any of these, we can just blow right past it. But if we have questions about how we get people to book in the first seven days. I'd love to answer those questions. Yep. Or maybe how do people upgrade? If you're, if you're, there's some confusion there, like, hey, you're advertising a free week. Why would anyone upgrade to a pay trial on day one? Maybe you have that question. Let us know. Uh, Elena has a question. Yeah, she has a question. I think I'm going to send her a message, Elena, if we can just answer that maybe after we dive into this. Um, yeah. It's a great question. I don't want to ignore it, um, but just to kind of stay on, on this topic real quick. And then definitely, yep. Elena, let's, let's get clarity to you. Definitely. Yes. So any questions about any of these parts of the process? How do you convert leads to paying customer? Brenda. Okay. okay. Lana, throw it in there. That's true. Yep. Definitely. Why try and upgrade to a paid trial? That's a great question. Ooh, that is a great yep. question. Love it. That's a good one. Excellent. All right. So let's see. What's the best strategy for school is not open yet? Okay. These are all good questions. Let's see if I can wrap them up into, into one. So why upgrade to the paid trial and how do you convert to the paying customer? Let's go through both of those. So if, why why upgrade to the pay trial is, um, remember we talked about stories, right? And we talked about the stories that happen outside of the conversation. So I want you to give you two scenarios. The first scenario is Johnny came in for a free class because they came for the free trial. You do the whole class and you're like, cool, it's Monday. I'll see you Tuesday or I'll see you Wednesday. You had a great time. They loved it. They're excited. They're like, cool. All right, we'll see you Wednesday. Now, Wednesday rolls around and class is four o'clock and it's 3.30 and little Johnny's in his room playing Fortnite, which is a video game if you don't know. And mom's like, hey, Johnny, time to go to karate or time to go to dance. Let's go. And he's like, I don't want to go. I'm in the middle of a game. It's a tournament and blah, 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 right? Now, mom has been exhausted all day and she's like, you know what? Who cares? We're not going to go. If you didn't like it, I thought you had fun there. He's going to say, uh, yeah, it was fine, but I'm playing it right now. I don't want to go. Mom's not going to argue. She has no skin in the game. However, if mom paid for a trial, let's say mom came to the first lesson and mom ends up paying for a trial to extend that lesson. And I can get into the details of that if you like it. Just let me know you want the details in the comments and I'll give you the details. But let's say mom paid for the, free, for the paid trial. How is this conversation going to sound now? Hey, Johnny, time for karate or time for dance class. Oh, I don't want to. Mom's going to do this. Put that uniform on. I paid money. We're going. It creates a habit. It gives her some skin in the game. Then the kid comes back and he loves it the second yep. time. Now he's starting to learn. I actually do like this better than playing Fortnite. 
Then yep. it comes around again. And you get a whole month of doing that, building that lesson. And guess what else it does? If you, let's say you offer classes three days a week. You think mom's going to only show up for one of those if she paid for a month of three days a week? No way. I'm going to get the most money, the most value out of my money I can get. So yep. you think a kid that's been there three times a week for four weeks, what do you think the odds are of you enrolling that child into a long-term contract? I mean, right. it's insane. So that's why somebody wants the details on that. Okay. Here's yeah. the, I'll give you the exact conversation. The conversation goes like this. You finish class. Little Johnny had a great time or let's go with the girls. Emma. Emma had an awesome time in class. Did you have fun? Yeah. You're high-fiving, right? You have a uniform. If you're teaching karate, you have like the top of the gi. If you're teaching dance, you might have like a tutu or some shoes or something that they can try on that is going to put them into the mindset where they transform into a person who does this, right? So maybe it's a t-shirt, maybe it's a top of a gi, maybe it's a, something in dance, if it's shoes or something that they're going to need for class anyway. Try this on. While they're trying that on, you're, you turn your attention to mom. You go, hey, Mrs. Smith, it's great. Little Emma here had such a great time in class. Did you see her? Oh, she was so cute, right? Awesome. Well, listen, I see you're here on the free week pass. That's great. Little Emma here can come in all week in her street clothes. No problem. We also have a different introductory offer. I think it's better, but I'll let you decide. This is a full month for $67. It comes with the free uniform. That way, little Emma here feels like part of the class and she gets longer to try it out. Um, but it's up to you. You can do the free weekend street clothes or you can do the full month for $67 with the free uniform. It's totally up to you which one's better for you. And then you just shut up. So there's no pitch. There's no explanation of why it's better. There's no like explaining. There's no, she's not gonna have any questions. It's two different offers. Either she comes for free in the, in the street clothes or she pays a little bit more, extends the trial longer and gets something free to take home. When you do that right, you do it just like I just did it. What do you, what percentage of people do you think will will actually take the upgrade? I love this question. What percentage? Yep. And as people are typing in their percentage, a lot of this is very similar to kind of the tweak you're asking um, about. The idea is that if we can upgrade them to a paid trial on day one, they're not going to be tire kickers. They're not going to waste your time because they're making a financial investment. So you don't have to worry about having those extra classes for people that aren't actually seriously interested. Um, and then it allows you to just really fully, it's kind of the similar what you're doing. Two weeks later, we teach our school owners on two weeks into that paid trial, how we can fully upgrade them into a full enrollment. Um, that way they're fully invested. So um, it's a very similar thing. We're just going to kind of move some chairs a little bit for you. So that way it's just a little bit more seamless. And it actually means less people wasting your time and wasting their time, to be honest. So uh, hopefully that gives you some clarity, but we got some answers, John. It's eight out of 10, seven out of 10, eight out of 10, two out of three we're oh. looking at. Okay. Ready? Drum roll. <laughs> Nine out of 10 is a low average. I would say usually it's 99% of people. And that's not an exaggeration. And why wouldn't they? It's a better offer, right? It's a new irresistible offer. And and what's up, the other great thing about it is anybody who doesn't take you up on the upgrade, guess what they get? A free class because they never come back. <laughs> They're not going to turn down the paid offer and then come back for two more classes that week. They just won't. I mean, maybe one out of a thousand will do that. But what happens is, this very first time they come in, they either commit or they go away. And so even if you're used to just giving away one free class, which is what a lot of schools are used to doing, and they're afraid to give away a free week because they're afraid somebody's going to waste space on their mat for a free week. We call them mat jumpers sometimes or Marley hoppers, right? You're not going to have to deal with that. The free, they're just going to come for the first lesson. They're either going to upgrade or they're just never going to come back. Yep. That's how it's going to work. And it's not, it's just a great way to weed out the people that aren't interested, which is a very low amount. If they've taken the effort to come into your school, they're at least going to give it a month to try it out. Yep. And I mean, we've been in schools that are our clients and we've actually witnessed what the transformation happens when that child tries on that uniform. It's incredible. This kid, I mean, I'll never forget this school owner had a changing room right by his front door, which was so smart. And he sent the kid in to try on the whole uniform. This is a karate school. And this kid came out like he was 10 feet tall and bulletproof. He, his parents were ready to run out the door. Like they had done, his parents were actually already outside. Weren't they Travis? Yeah. They were outside, like his trying to like get to the outside, car. Yeah. Like gone. And he's like, here, try this on Jimmy. He goes and tries it on. The kid comes out. He's like, high five and strangers. He runs outside. He's like, 
dad, look at this. Drags his parents back in. <laughs> he goes yeah. over his little 15 second spiel about you could do the upgrade. He wrote that guy signed up for the whole year. I think. Yeah. They paid like, the year ahead in advance. Yep. Yeah. The first day well, it was the first time they saw their kid excited about something that yes. was going to give him discipline. The right. kid was excited to be a part of something that was going to give him structure and discipline as opposed yes. to mom. Why do I have to do this? Which was really, really cool. You know, the parents saw the joy on his face. So yeah. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, this stuff works, but uh, other questions about anything specifically around this stuff, the upgrades, the, how about how to get people in within seven days? We can get into some depth on that if you want, or if you got that dialed in, we don't need to cover it. Yeah. And as people are you know, typing those questions in, you know, we do have a lot of this stuff already pre pre-created, right? We already have all this stuff mapped out. We have a script actually for all these conversations. So you don't have to figure out oh, what exactly do I say? How do I say it? When do, you know, when do I schedule leads? When do I upgrade into a full enrollment? Um, so if you're looking for, Hey man, this sounds great. What's, how do I implement this in my school? What would you say to that, John? Uh, I would say type the word invite in the comments and uh, let's get on a call. Let's just see if this is something that would work in your school. What do you think about that? Is that good? I think that's great. So type the word invite if you're interested in an invitation to get on a call with us. We'll do and that. what I wanted to say earlier, if you're looking for, and Carl's kind of asking this question, if you want to know, hey, how much can I afford to uh, to get per student? How can, can I calculate exactly how much I can afford to pay to get a student or calculate that type of, hey, what should I be expecting back from a good plan like this? Anybody that books a call, I'm, I'm going to be the one doing the call. Um, so anybody that jumps on a call with me, um, I'll make sure I get that calculator to you. Um, the call is really just an opportunity for me to learn more about your school. Hey, is this something that will work? This doesn't work for everybody. I think it, it works for everybody with the right mindset, and the right processes. But there's some people we talk to and hey, this just doesn't work. So um, if you jump on a call, if you book a call, I'll make sure you get that. That way, when we talk, we can have a tangible thing to look at as far as because if, if you can afford $20 to acquire a student, paid marketing is not for you, right? So we'll be able to do that together. So it's a great tool for us to work on together. Um, if you decide, you know, if we can get that call booked, I'll make sure I get that calculator over to you. So just type the word, what was it? Invite, John? Just type invite. the word, invite, in the word invite. Yes. Yep. And I'll we shoot you, I'll shoot you a link to, to get that, that booked. Yep. Cool. So let me just run you through a quick example here. Uh, let's say you spend 600 bucks on ads, right? It'd be about $20 a day. You might expect 50 leads from that. Depends on the area, but let's say you get 50 leads, 25 people out of that lead list book an intro lesson. 11 of those people pay for a trial because 12 probably showed up. $67 comes in times 11. That's $737. What does that look like? That looks like you can enroll at least five students from that, increase your revenue by 750 a month, and then you just repeat it by taking that 737 and putting it right back into ads, right? So you're seeing that the flywheel takes place right here, right? You collect the money, you put it back into ads. That's all trial money. And then you're enrolling five new students every month from those 11 who pay trials. This is just an example, obviously, but this is some of the metrics that we help you work out when you first sign up with us as a coaching client is we actually dig into your numbers. We give you some exercises to figure out what should your ad spend be? How much can you afford to spend? And uh, we get into some real detailed stuff on that. So that's just an example to show you the flywheel of how you can keep using trial money to continue paying for ads. And really what this does, it gives you an unlimited potential to grow because you have an ever replenishing ad budget, right? It's, it's no longer how much can I afford to spend on ads? It's how many students do I want to get? And then you just multiply that out by how much you know that you can spend to get there. And this is one of my favorite expressions. I just discovered this one. Knowledge is like paint. It does no good until it's applied. So you guys have learned a lot on this webinar, right? You have been filled with knowledge, but what will you do with it? How will you apply it? Please don't keep it on a shelf in a bucket because that's not going to do you any good. We want to transform your schools. We want to help you do that. I want you to just imagine having that strategy step-by-step step that leads to that growth and fulfillment for you. And with coaches, like we're here to coach you through it. We're here to guide you on the journey and lead you into the application of that knowledge and really set your school up on an upward trajectory. And right now you're standing at this crossroads. You have the knowledge. You think there might be a way that you can implement it, but we want to help you give you the exact roadmap step-by-step. Step. So if you want that and you're ready to transform your school, go ahead and type the word invite in the comments and uh, we will go through what we call a game plan call. It's not a sales call. You actually can't buy anything on this call. So we should clarify that. We'll let you. 
nothing for sale on it. You are not allowed to buy on this. This is really just for us to ask you some questions to figure out what's going on in your school. Um, if you want to bookmark this page that you see on the screen here, getfullclasses.com forward slash call. You can actually schedule the call yourself. It has our availability there. We've opened up some time on the calendar over the next probably week to be able to do that. Um, and re what we really want to do on this call is just connect and see you know, what's going on in your school. Where are you in the journey? Are you new? Are you established? Are you small? Are you medium-sized? Are you large? What's your community like? Is it a small rural town? Is it a, are you in the middle of downtown New York? Um, right. And really what your just tuition structure is what your audience is, stuff like that. Exactly. Right. Exactly. And get some um, clarity, help give you some insight. Yeah. Because, and sometimes I've gotten on calls one people <laughs> they're like, I want to buy I'm like, we can't, like, I've actually had to tell people, no, this call, put the credit card away. No, you're excited, but I want to make sure this works for you. Just like people coming into your school. You know, if someone uh, comes into a martial arts school and says, well, I want you to teach me how to kill someone. You're probably gonna be like, Hey, this might not be a good fit for you. <laughs> um, if someone comes to a dance studio and says, well, I want to, I hate dance. You're like, okay. But they have their credit card out. You're not going to say, well, let's process the the tuition. Right. right. So it's just not going to be a good fit for anybody. So this call is, Hey, can we help point you in the right direction? Is our system the right direction? Awesome. If it's not, what is what's I've talked to school owners that the biggest issue was their instructors. They actually had a lot of stuff dialed in. It's just that they actually had kind of a cancer going on in their instructors. And I pointed them in direction of some programs that help them find instructors. So um, we just want to make, that's all this call is, is, is kind of like, all right, what's going on in the studio? What's the diagnosis? And then, Hey, is, is ours the medicine? You know, is that what's going to help you or is it something else? So that's why I love doing it. This is how we learn so much is because we really talk to anybody. We talk to everybody that's, that's running schools so we can figure out what direction it needs to be. Yep. Definitely. Definitely. So go ahead and type the word invite in the chat right now. Uh, if you want to get invited to that call, we'll send you over the link. Actually, that's good, good thing in there, Travis. So just post it right there. So you guys can just go ahead and click that link, getfullclasses.com slash call. It's in the chat right now. And you can go ahead and book your call. Our availability is on that screen already. So you can just select a date, select a time, and uh, you can go ahead and schedule a call just like that. What we really want to do is just shine some light on some areas that might be missing in your promotions and uh, at the very least, give you a valuable game plan of action by the end of the call. So it's a five to 15 minute call. It's not very long at all. Um, it's just a, it's a great time for you to just kind of connect with us. And really, it's really a good way to say, like, is this are these the kind of people I want to work with? Do I want to be involved with John and Travis? Maybe you get on the call and you just don't like us. It's better to figure that out now than after you pay money for something, right? So we just want to just get on the call and see if this is a good fit for you. You can see if we're a good fit. We can make sure that you're going to be a good fit and uh, talk through some questions, what it looks like specifically for your school and see if it's going to work in your area. So all you have to do is type the word invite in the comments right now or go to that link, getfullclasses.com forward slash call, and you can book the call yourself. Um, and I'd just love for you to imagine your school's transformation this place where growth and prosperity and impact all come together, where they converge, right? Because I think a lot of times we think the impact is going to take away from the growth. Or the impact is going to take away from the prosperity. But if we could get all those things to merge together in one place at your school, that's really the magic of it. And so at this point, you know, we've kind of come to the end of this webinar. And uh, I just want you to remember that this really starts with the first step, you know, you've got the knowledge now, now how do you apply it? And so before we conclude, uh, I'd love to just celebrate your commitment to staying an extra 20 minutes past what we had initially anticipated yeah. this going, right? So if you just type a one in the comments, it's kind of a way to give yourself a round of applause for sticking around. So yeah. let's just give you all a one. Everybody type a one in the comments just to give yourselves a nice round of applause. Thank you for being here. I'll be the first to do that. Good job, John. Way um, to stick to the end, John. That's right. <laughs> Good job, Chris. <laughs> Thanks, yeah, guys. Very Appreciate nice. Guys. Yes, awesome. yes, yes. Awesome. Great, great, great. Dude, thank okay, you. so for, for those of you still here, if you do want to book that call, you can just click the link that's in the chat right now. Travis, you might have to repost that now that all those ones are in yep, there. But let me get that in there with all those comments. Getfullclasses.com forward slash call. You can schedule your call. And uh, that way we can get on the phone five to 15 minutes. Um, and uh, at this point, I guess if we have any other questions, we can run in those. Otherwise, we can just jump in. I mean, we're about 20 minutes over, so we'll probably have about two, three minutes to jump into some questions if anybody has any. Um, but otherwise, you know, it'd be great to meet you guys on that call, talk through some things, and uh, see if it's going to be a good fit for you. You see any questions coming in, Travis? 
Um, nah, uh, not as of right now. Uh, Alana did ask earlier, uh, so we said we would cover it, is yeah. what our thoughts would be on um, running a kind of an awareness campaign in conjunction with a call to action campaign. Mm. I'd say if your marketing budget is over $200 a day, then you may maybe want to think about an awareness type thing where you're just broadening the reach. Um, but even then, I probably wouldn't. So I'd say most schools are probably 20 to $50 a day. We'll fill your school higher and faster than any a conversion budget. Like if you're 20 to $50 on a lead conversion campaign where you're just collecting name, email, phone number of people who are interested in trying a free week at your school, um, that's about as far as you ever need to go. And then past that, I'd probably do a retargeting if you wanted to get real fancy. Um, <laughs> and then, uh, then maybe, I don't know. I've never actually found any use in an awareness campaign. I don't want to dog anybody if they have like a good strategy out there. There might be. Facebook loves telling you to run awareness campaigns, by the way. If you ever have logged into Facebook Business Manager and they want to book a call with you every time you click in there, or they call you three times in a row and leave you a message on the third one, like every two weeks, which is what they do to me, they always want you to run awareness campaigns. For the life of me, I can't figure out why, because it's never converted to students ever in any of my experiments. Um, so hopefully that answers your question. Perfect. Michael, thanks for being on, sir. Looking forward yep. to speaking with you, Chris. Thank you. Thank you for being on. All right. Well, I guess let's, uh, wrap it up. Appreciate it, everybody. Thanks so much. All right, guys. Well, uh, thanks for sticking around for one hour and 23 minutes and, uh, looking forward to speaking to those of you who have booked a call and, uh, you know, we do this pretty often, but, uh, I guess if we don't talk to you on a call, we will just see you next time.